Today we will talk about another hereditary disorder affecting the kidney, which is nail patella syndrome. Nail patella syndrome is a rare disease. It is an autosomal dominant disease characterized by from its name, nail and patella affection. It's characterized by hypoplasia or absence of patella, abs uh, uh, dystrophy of nails, and also can be associated with elbow dysplasia, very characteristic iliac horns, and kidney affection, as we are going to see. So don't forget autosomal dominant, nail, and patella affection. Nail patella syndrome is caused by mutations in a gene called LMX1B, LMX1B. A lot of forms of this mutation can occur in the form of missense, splicing, insertion, or deletion. This gene is important for normal limb and kidney development, but the exact mechanism for the renal affection is not clear. We will start our clinical manifestation for that disease by the kidney affection. Apparent kidney affection is present in less than 50% of cases. The kidney affection is mostly benign and only three to five there is only three to five percent risk for progression to end stage so in most of the cases it is a mild affection in the form of hematuria and mild proteinuria some sort of hypertension in some cases but the risk to to reach end stage renal disease is around three to five percent and if kidney is affected in such patient usually it begins in adolescence or young adulthood so in summary the kidney affection in nail patella syndrome is somewhat benign there is some cases of CKD in the form of hematuria and proteinuria in a renal biopsy in such cases the light microscopy revealed non-specific features and can demonstrate fo focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, mild mesangial hypercellularity. But the most important uh, uh, modality to reach your diagnosis from renal biopsy is, of course, the electron microscopy. The electron microscopy is required for the diagnosis and revealed showing the characteristic loosenses of the glomerular basement membrane with irregular basement membrane giving a very characteristic appearance of moth-eaten appearance for the glomerular basement membrane. Don't forget that. So nail patella syndrome will give a moth-eaten appearance of the glomerular basement membrane due to the presence of multiple irregular loosenses. Also, another characteristic feature is the presence of cross-banded collagen fibrils, collagen fibril in these lucent areas, and these collagen fibers are easily observed when staining with phosphotungastic acid. So, don't forget to, uh, these two characteristic lesions, moth-eaten appearance due to lucences and collagen fibers by phosphotungastic acid stain and this is the characteristic moth-eaten appearance as we see here with enlarged glomerular basement membrane and as you see these are multiple irregular loosenses very characteristic moth-eaten appearance don't forget this picture also on the right side you can see here by the black arrow the irregular basement membrane and here with the white arrow, you can see the collagen fibrils, collagen fibrils when staining by phosphotungastic acid. 
don't forget these pictures. Now we'll talk about the more characteristic features, clinical features of the nail patella syndrome. Of course, we'll talk about the skeletal manifestations in the forearm. And the most important is the patella affection. The patella, patella are absent or hypoplastic in more than 90% of patients, in more than 90%. And this will lead to the usually patient are presented by recurrent or knee joint effusion and osteoarthritis. Knee joint effusions and osteoarthritis. Also, in 80% of patients, there are multiple osseous processes projecting from the iliac wings, giving a pathognomonic, a pathognomonic lesion called the iliac horns iliac horns also el elbows can be hypoplastic and can be also some posterior processes from in the humerus but the most characteristic features don't forget patella patella are absent or hypoplastic leading to knee joint effusion and osteoarthritis and the pathognomonic iliac Holes. As we see here with the white arrow, these are the iliac holes. Don't forget this x ray uh, picture. And below, you can see the knee effusion. And here, uh, there is absence of patella. Absence of patella. What about the nails? The first part of this disease name, nail patella syndrome. Nails are affected in 80 and 98% of patients, and usually this affection is bilateral and symmetrical. Fingernails are more affected than toe nails, and the affection is in the form of absence or dystrophy with discoloration of nails. Coilonychia can occur, some longitudinal ridges or triangular lonely. So the most characteristic feature is absence or dystrophy of nails in approaching 100% of cases. Regarding treatment, there is no specific treatment for nail patella syndrome. No reported recurrence in transplanted kidneys. And because this disease is autosomal dominant disorder, we should give careful evaluation of the potential living kidney donors. To summarize, don't forget, this is an autosomal dominant disease due to mutation in LMX1P gene. The very characteristic features, nail affection, atrophy or dysplasia, patella affection, absence or hypoplasia, leading to knee osteoarthritis, the pathognomonic iliac horns, and the kidney is usually mildly affected. Light microscopy of the renal biopsy, usually non-specific features. Electron microscopy is a must, revealing multiple irregular loosenses, giving a moth-eaten appearance, and we can see collagen fibrils in these loosened areas when staining by phosphotungestic acid stain, and there is no specific treatment for this disorder. Thank you.